Amen. One he's talking about wrote that song that wrote the other one. The other one he's not the same too. Uh, God can work it out. We're going to have him come and preach a revival for us for CT Township. Yeah. And we would love to have him and his wife do a lot of singing. And they will bless your heart and he can flatch your preach. So uh, we'd love to get him to come and stay so busy, but we're going to get him to come. All right, we got your Bible. <coughs> the book of Joshua. Y'all see, maybe I'm trying to talk a little lower than I usually do. I have real congestion in my chest, so I try to hold my volume down so I don't get started talking real bad. <coughs> But if I get real bad, then I'll have to quit. And I don't want to do that. I don't want to preach this sermon this morning. Uh, the plan of salvation is found in the Old Testament. Go to the book of Joshua, chapter 2, and verse 1. Just a perfect picture of an Old Testament example of salvation. Uh, Lord, I need your help. I had to go my coffee this morning. And Lord, I just pray to God that I speak the words of you. And only you can send to me, God. I, I, I don't look for another power. I don't look for another source, God. Uh, you're, you're my all in all. My everything, God, that, that, that speaks through me, I can't do it unless you do it. So help me, Lord, in the power of the Holy Spirit. Grip this room right now. We surrender ourselves to you. And from the sole of our feet to the top of our head, Lord, we're surrendered. Now, God, you speak uh, as only you can in Christ's name. Amen. Chapter 2 and verse 1, the Bible says, And Joshua the son of Nun sent out uh, of Shadow two men to spy secretly, saying, Go view the land, even Jericho. And they went and came into an harlot's house named Rahab and lodged there. And it was told the king of Jericho, saying, Behold, there came men in hither tonight of uh, the children of Israel to search out the country. And the king of Jericho sent unto Rahab saying, Bring forth the men that are come to thee, which are entered into thine house, for they be come to search out all the country. And the woman took the two men and hid them, and said thus, There came men unto me, but I wist not whence I wist not whence they were. And it came to pass about the time of the shutting of the gate, when it was dark that the men went out. Whether the men went, I won't not. Pursue after them quickly, for ye shall overtake them. But she had brought them up to the rooftop, or to the roof, uh, up to the roof of the house, and hid them with stalks of flax, which she had laid in order upon the roof. And the men pursued after them the way to Jordan, unto the forge, and as soon as they which pursued after them were gone out, they shut the gate. And before they were laid down, she came unto them upon the roof, saying unto the men, I know that the Lord hath given you the land, and that your territory or your terror is fallen upon us, and that all the inhabitants of the land faint because of you. And we have heard how the Lord dried up the water of the Red Sea for you when you came out of Egypt and what you did unto the two kings of the Amorites that were on this side of Jordan, Sinon and Og, whom you utterly destroyed. And as soon as we had heard these things, our hearts did melt. Neither did there any remain any more courage in any man because of you. For the Lord your God, he is God in heaven above and in the earth beneath. Now therefore I pray you, I, I pray you, swear to me by the Lord, since I have showed you kindness, that you will also show kindness unto my Father's house and give me a true token. And that you will save alive my father, my mother, my brethren, my sister, and all that have, and deliver our lives from death. And the man answered her, Our lives for yours. If ye utter not this our business, and it shall be when the Lord hath given us the land, that we will deal kindly and truly with thee. Then she let them down by a cord through the window, for her house was upon the top, upon the, the town wall. 
and she dwelt upon the wall. And she said unto them, Get you to the mountains, lest pursuers meet you, and hide yourself there three days until the pursuers be returned. And afterwards may you go away and be seated. The simple salvation message is found in these few verses. But I want you to remember your day of salvation. Now the one I'm going to outline in here is not the Romans road. Uh, it is not the typical form uh, of scriptures we use uh, to lead somebody to the Lord. But listen, I think this is going to, to, to set a great example to you that throughout the Word of God, the, the, the plan of salvation is mentioned over and over and over again. And, and you can begin to read about Jesus and the examples of Christ and the examples of salvation. You go ahead and start in Genesis to Revelation and see the plan of salvation that God intended for mankind throughout the whole book of the Bible. Every book of the Bible has Jesus in it. Now I said that to say this. Remember, you don't have to go my way. You don't have to go her way or his way. We all have to go God's way. Amen. Forget forget denomination. Forget affiliation. Forget all of those things. As long as I go God's way, as long as I go Jesus said I am the way, the truth, the life, and no one comes unto the Father but by me. So you may not have had quite the same experience I had. Rahab didn't have the same experience I had, but she got saved. Rahab was saved that day, not the same way I was. Uh, now the circumstances weren't the same, and, and, I, and it very seldom ever would be uh, that two people had the same exact experience. That's right. And you, you can't put off uh, on somebody that tells you that they're saved, and they give you their testimony, and it varies a little bit this way or that way from yours, uh, then they're not saved. Listen to me, if they went to Christ asking for forgiveness, if they truly went to Him heartbroken and ready to give their life to God, they're saved. Amen. He doesn't turn them down. He doesn't mix words, though. See? I mean, it, it, God knows first off the intent of the heart, so the words are not nearly as important to Him as they are to you. Because he, he reads the intent of the heart. But there are words that we use to, to get saved and ask God to save us. I just want you to look at a couple of the points that I'm talking about uh, in verse 10 uh, she says we heard of you we heard of your God we heard what he done uh, on the other side of Jordan we heard that he dried up the Red Sea for you we heard that he uh, defeated your enemies uh, before you uh, and uh, we know that we're next you're coming to, to Jericho next and uh, we've heard of your God uh, he is the God of heaven. Uh, so, uh, regardless of how uh, exactly you laid out or, or the plan that you uh, remember was laid out, you, you had to have heard sometimes. You got to hear. You got to hear. And listen, uh, without us, without us, the world's not going to hear. There, there's nobody out there. There's very little soul winning going on at all anymore. And even in our whole state, uh, and, and certainly in our country, there's very little soul winning going on anymore. So if they're going to hear, they're probably going to hear from us. Uh, especially a uh, hundred miles every direction from this church. If they're going to hear, they're more than likely going to hear from Vision Baptist Church people uh, that are saved, that are soul winners, that will go out and reach a lost and dying world. We're, we're, we're their hope. We're their hope. He's our hope. But we're their hope to lead them to Him. I'm telling you, because there's not a lot of, there's not a lot of gospel preaching going on anymore. There's not a lot of anything going on in the church anymore but entertainment. Uh, it's basically just become a vaudeville show or something, you know, more or less. And, 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 and it frustrates me to no end the people that are building these new churches, so-called churches nowadays, they won't even put the word church on the sign. It's the family worship center or, or some kind of center or this kind of center. Why don't you want to say church? Say what you are. If you're not a church, don't act like one or try to halfway act like one so you can kind of erase what church really means. Church has a definite meaning to it. Church is a called out symbol, assembly of God's uh, baptized believers in the Lord Jesus Christ that have assembled themselves together 
to do the work of God. That's what a church is. Now, I don't know what a worship center, outreach center, those are ministries of the church, perhaps, under the umbrella of the church, but why don't go and put church on the sign? Amen. And listen, there's a lot of them right here in our area right now. You can go check out their sign. They don't got church road on. You know why? They want to they want to, to put, a, put that away. See, they say they done are the liberal religious sect of people that's in America today, led by I'll just hold the name back to myself. I know who it is, but and you would know it if I mentioned him. So I don't the name probably doesn't do any good. But the, the liberal sect of of, of, of Christian today has done a survey, a huge nationwide survey to find out what people like. We want to know what everybody likes. I don't care what you like. I'm here to preach the God. I'm here to preach the Word of God. If it peels your hide, buddy, let it peel your hide. You hide needs peeling. If, 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 you go, if you're just going somewhere to listen to somebody whistle some pretty music and, and say all these good things about you and how good you are, how good we are and how good they are and let's go to the house and come in one way and leave the same way. That's not a church. A church is a place where people come out of the world and find out about Jesus, fall on their knees guilty, give their heart to Him and leave saved. That's a church. And that's what we're supposed to be doing. I know there's a lot of things. Like we just went through a vacation Bible school. Our kids had a blast and I'm not having any problems doing those kind of things. But there comes a time that if the church is not preaching the gospel, it ain't a church. Right. It just ain't a church. So they got to have heard. So Rahab heard. She said, we have heard about your God. We heard how furious He is. How awesome of a God you have that can say to the Red Sea, be divided in half, and the Red Sea stand up. And the, and the children of Israel walk all over on, on dry ground. You've got an awesome God. And He's the God of heaven and of earth. <clears throat> then in verse 11, do you not only find out that she heard, but that she feared? Wonder if, when, do you remember when you got saved? How I many when you got, remember when you got saved? Raise your hand. Let's see him. Remember when you got saved. Okay. Do you remember when you were convicted? Do you remember the conviction of the Holy Spirit of God? Do you remember that? Raise your hand. Okay? Now listen to me. Without conviction, there's no conversion. I'm telling you right now, there is nobody to convince you that you need God but God. God is the only one by the power of the Holy Spirit, the preaching of the Word of God, the preaching of the Gospel, is the only one that can show you and give you enough confidence to get up out of your chair and come get you some Jesus. He's the only one. He's the only one that can do it. Nobody else can. He's the one that can convince. By the power of the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit says, oh, come on, go ahead, go, go ahead, come on. Come on, go on down there. And it's the voice that's already begun to work in your ear and in your heart today. There's already the Holy Spirit begin to nudge you. And hey, that's you. You know, you've heard the gospel. You know you need to fear God. God, God will put up with sin. God's a holy God. God's a righteous God. But God will forgive sin. God loves you. And He wants to forgive your sin and save you and make you His, his child today. So, so she heard and then she feared. Fear brought on conviction. You say, well, what, 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 is, what is conviction? It is the knowledge that I'm doing wrong and God don't like it. Yeah. I'm doing wrong and God's not going to put up with it. God's not going to let me into heaven with sin covering me. He'll let me into heaven with the blood covering me, but not sin covering me. So, so she, she heard, and then she feared. And then she asked. Then she asked. Hey, 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 listen. I done y'all a favor. I hid y'all. I kept y'all safe. You do it for me? When y'all come into the city, when your God sends y'all in here, will you save my life? Will you save my life? He said, our life for yours. Sure will. Our God will stand on the vow that we make with you today 
and He will save your soul. He will not only save you, He'll save your house, and He'll save every one of your brothers. That's what a blessing you just got today. God said He does care when you get saved that you've got two brothers and three sisters at the house of law. He cares. He cares about them. And if you, you know what I, I think we need to do way more than we're doing now? We need to mention our family. Way more than we mentioned in our family. Now, we don't use to put it in every prayer, then we kind of got away from it for a while, you know. It's kind of, now we got to pray and we don't even mention them anymore at all. Uh, and we don't even think, you know, a lot of times when we're confronted with the idea, we think there's a possibility they're probably just going to stay lost and we're going to go on to heaven. <clears throat> and we've satisfied her. We don't tell you that now. We finally got to the place, you know, and we just, we just got to where we, the devil just kind of, you know, stroke us and stroke us. But we got comfortable with that. You know, we, you know, man, are you telling me that the devil stroked you in to thinking that it'd be all right if your mama went to hell? Mercy. While you're going to heaven? Mercy. Yeah, because you know, I can't do anything with my mother. Boy, you ought to get saved so you can. Yeah. Yeah. I'm telling you right now, if you'll get saved, God twists you into any shape he needs you to be to get to that person if you will just surrender. Lord, I didn't get them this time. Will you, will you go with me next time? He said, it ain't over yet. Let's go back. We'll go again. And if it don't work this time, he said, Lord, will you go with me? He said, I'm one step ahead of you. Let's go. We're going to get them. We're going to get them. I made you a promise. If you keep praying for them, if you wouldn't quit, I would quit. So I'm not going to quit. If you'll keep calling their name, I'll keep going to them and I'll keep touching their heart. Don't you quit and I won't quit. You won't quit, God won't quit. And if you got somebody you really, don't, really, really, really want to get saved, and really want to see serving God, don't you give up on so easy. And who are you to give up anyway? Why would you give up? Give me a good excuse. Well, it's wearing me out. Come on. What, saying another prayer? Wherever you're at? I don't know where you're at. <clears throat> I wish you did get wore out talking that little bit. Because I ain't never seen you get wore out. <laughs> well, I, that would be a, a miracle. Amen. He called me when that happened, but I won't see a miracle. Amen. Uh, so she was saved. And for her to be, be, be saved, see, salvation is right here. Or right where you're at if your heart will get into condition. But we use the altar as just a, a neutral place to where we talk about getting saved. You can get saved in your car. You can get saved in your living room, in the back of the house, out in the yard, under the house. I don't care. If you call on the right one, you call on Jesus, he'll save you wherever you're at. <clears throat> but see, Jesus... He's available right here today. He's available. And He puts Himself out there. In the presence the power of the Holy Ghost, He puts His power out there and He waits for you to come and just take it. All you've got to do is take it. You, you, you haven't got to do anything yet. You haven't got to come up here and work no miracle. You haven't got to come up here, climb up on the table, jump off, do two flips, land in the split. You ain't got to do none of that. you got to just walk up here. Lord, I'm broke. Fix me. Forgive me and save me. Lord, will you fix my broken heart and my broken life? I give myself to you today. It's done deal. He'll save you. <coughs> but you have to, you know, if I put a hundred dollar bill, which I'm not going to, but if I laid a hundred, I know y'all, I, I, it'd be gone so quick and I, I wouldn't even get my conversation. I put my hundred dollars looking, then I wouldn't have a conversation for you. But if I put a hundred dollar bill on this altar, it can stay there to the rocks unless you come get it. It can't walk to you. It's not coming to you. The Holy Spirit came to you to get you to walk down and take what God gave you, what God's offering you. God's offering you today. Salvation. Salvation today. She heard. She feared. She asked, she received, <coughs> she was saved. But that is not even the close of it. One more thing, one more thing. When she did receive that she was saved, <coughs> then she had a message. She was now a soul winner. She could tell them, look, I don't know about all that y'all talking about. But there's a God that come across the Red Sea with His people. He crossed the Jordan River. He's headed this way. He's going to kill everybody that ain't under His blood. I'm telling you for a truth. I met this 
Jesus that is, that is preached and prophesied about. And by the time you get to the book of Joshua, you've had Jesus prophesied so many times that there's plenty of gospel to get saved on. She said, He's headed this way. <coughs> and He's sending out an invitation to you. He's sending you out an invitation <coughs> ahead of Himself. Now the invitation has been given here today. The invitation has been offered. God said, I'll save you just like I saved her. Just like I saved Rahab. <coughs> and when they crawled down out of the window on this red cord and she let them down on the outside of the wall, they said, look, leave that red cord, which was a symbol of the blood. Leave that red cord hanging in the window. We'll save your house. We'll save your house. We'll keep God's promise. Same thing with you. You get covered by the blood. You 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 present the blood when 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 the angel comes and says, "Hey, why should we let you into God's heaven?" You go like, "The blood. The blood. That's the only reason you should let me into heaven is the blood. God's blood covered me when I asked Him to forgive my sins, make me a new person." He never hesitated. And He covered me with His blood. That's why you should take me to heaven. So I want to encourage you today. <clears throat> and I know I haven't been able to speak really forceful. But you know God barely does need me at all. The power of the Holy Spirit, the voice of God, is much clearer than mine is today. And He speaks to all. If there's no lost people in the room today, not any lost people in the room today that don't know it. God's not that kind of God. He's not going to put me up here to preach the gospel message and then not deliver it to you in a way that you could understand it, a way that the Holy Spirit could get a hold of the handles of your heart. So your heart got to be turned a little bit toward God. That way the handles are easier for the Holy Spirit to get to. Well, God has to turn that heart toward Himself. When He does that, He's got them handles that pop out on the side and the Holy Spirit grabs your heart and says, oh, come on, come on, come on. He tugs and tugs on your heart, friend. Why? Because God loves you. God loves you. He wants to save you. He wants to forgive you. He wants to make you His child. He wants you to belong to His family. He wants you to be His girl, His boy. He wants you to walk out of here way different than you came in. So you can come in lost. Don't leave that way. That's not God's intention for that to ever happen. There's not supposed to be a, ever a, a church service go by that lost people come in and they walk out lost. They're supposed to get saved. Every time they walk in lost, they're supposed to leave saved. Amen. I want to encourage you today to bring the message to a close. I want to encourage you today by the power of heaven, by the blood of the Lamb, by the sacrifice that only Christ can make. I want to encourage you today to come to this altar, come to this invitation time. Because I'm sure that the Lord runs ahead of me when He gives me a message like this. He walks ten steps ahead of me and He does the work that only the Holy Spirit can do before I get there. And then I just spark it in you because of the two connection. But God has already made His connection with you before I ever preach. He had to get your heart to sit up straight and your eyes to focus right on the preacher and the Word goes straight to your heart. And if your heart's lost, He'll let you know. He'll tell you, I came to get you this morning. I came to make you mine this morning. Now will you come to Him? Will you meet Him to where He comes standing? He's standing right here. One of y'all wanted to come today. He's right here. Come on. Get on your knees right there and ask Him. Right there. Jesus is here today. For you over here. Jesus is right here. He's right here. Come fall on your knees right here. He's already ahead of me. He came down off the altar before I did. He went through the pew. When I was preaching the Word, He was preaching the heart. He done His work. I done my work. Now you've got to give an answer. You got to decide. I done my work. God done His work. Now you do your work. Come when you see yourself lost, and you know God done it just for you, and He would have done it just all oh, for you only, if you were the only one. Amen. 
He done it with your name on it. You come to this altar this morning and get saved. Rahab said, I'm not letting you guys leave here until I get in touch with that God you're talking about. I don't want you to leave here today until you get in touch with this God that I'm talking about. Let's pray. Father, as we close, God in our spirit yearns, Lord, hurts and aches for those that are in this room, God, that don't know you as Savior. Some of them know you to some degree. And they agree that you came and died to the devil to do that. Lord, they need to come to you repenting, calling on you to save them. And God, I know you're willing to do it. You came ahead of me. The Holy Spirit's traveled through this room to every heart and to not miss even one in showing them their need for a Savior. Lord, you have your way in Christ's name. Amen. Let's stand for it.